Hey team, we're gonna create a headless WordPress blog using Next.js WordPress Starter. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. As you might already know, WordPress is basically the king CMS of the web industry, where a lot of people use it to provide a great editing experience for clients or even for themselves when working with the web. Traditionally though, when working with WordPress, you have your front end built into the WordPress ecosystem where it generates on the server and returns the HTML to the browser. Instead, we want to use a client-side framework like Next.js where we can leverage the power of React and create a great experience inside of the browser while still using WordPress. Now, lucky for us, WordPress actually ships by default as a headless option, meaning we can hit all of our WordPress data with its REST API, which ships by default, where we can make a request to this API and get all of our content and render it out right inside of Next.js. But to take that a step further, we're going to actually use WP GraphQL, which is a plugin API for WordPress where we can write GraphQL queries to make complex relationships between all of our WordPress data, where we can more easily manage and add that right into our project. And to bring this all together inside of a new WordPress Next.js project, we're going to use this starter I created called Next.js WordPress Starter, where with a simple command using a template inside of Create Next App, we're going to bootstrap a complete WordPress blog website where we're going to add our environment variable for our endpoint for GraphQL, which is going to query all of our data for us and immediately set us up with a new project. The cool thing is out of the box, we're going to be able to bring all of our WordPress content to a static website where we can have all of our posts, where we can also have the attributions for each of the authors, we can have categories, but we also have client side search, which is super fast and we can use it to search for our content within our WordPress site. So we're gonna start off with a pretty default installation of WordPress, where I created this simple WordPress installation using AWS Light Sale, where we can see if I open it up, it's just a simple WordPress blog where I use the plugin FakerPress to add some fake content just so that we had something to work with as we're going through our project. Now, as we're working through here, you might see that there's a bunch of plugins available here, but these are really just what comes by default with AWS Light Sale and really isn't important for the purposes of this tutorial. So what we're instead going to do is head up to add new plugin where we're gonna search for WP GraphQL where once that comes up, we're gonna hit install now right inside of WordPress GraphQL, where now once we activate that, we're gonna see we have this graphical IDE as well as the option down inside of our sidebar where if we select this IDE, we can go through and we can create queries just like we would with GraphQL anywhere else, where particularly I went through here, I selected posts, I went through the different edges and the node, and I simply selected the date and the title just for demonstration purposes. And we can see if we click play, we're gonna have all of our WordPress data available as that GraphQL query. Now, when you set up WP GraphQL on your project, what you're gonna have is a, w a GraphQL endpoint where if we take our host name and we go to that, which for me, it's just an IP right now, but if we go to slash GraphQL, which is the default endpoint, we're gonna see this GraphQL error, which for our purposes just means it works because it's not supposed to work as a get request like this. But now we can see that we have confirmed our new WordPress installation where feel free to add any kind of posts you want at this point. We're just gonna go through and take this and install it with our Next.js WordPress starter. So to get started, we can see our commands that we need to run to start our project where I'm gonna copy the yarn command. You can use NPX if you'd like, or I'm gonna paste that right into my terminal where it's going to start creating the project for us by getting all the Next.js dependencies. And it's also going to clone this GitHub project that I have called Next.js WordPress Starter as the template that it's gonna to use to start the application. And the first thing it does, if you don't pass in your project name, is it's going to ask for a project name. So I'm gonna call mine, my blog. Or once I hit start, it's going to go through and finish the installation and finish all the installations of the dependencies. Now, once it's done, we can CD into my blog where before we actually get started, we wanna add that environment variable so that we know where to actually point to for requesting the data. So once I open up my project, we can see that we have a lot of things going on. Like we have our source where it's really a, a basic Next.js project where we have our pages and we even have some predetermined styles just to make it easier to get up and running with our project. But for now, what we wanna do first is we're gonna create a new file 
at the root of our project called .env.local, which this is a Next.js format for creating a local environment variable file where we're gonna paste in our WP GraphQL endpoint. We can see that back over at GitHub where let's copy and paste this value into our project. And I'm going to change this to our IP where remember in your case, you wanna replace this with your personal host name of your WordPress instance, followed by the endpoint, which if you didn't change it by default, it's going to be slash GraphQL. But once we save that and we go back over to our terminal, we can run yarn dev or npm run dev, which it's going to start our Next.js server. And if we load that inside of our browser, it might take a few seconds the first time just because it's going to go through requesting all of our data from Next.js. And you can actually see that by inside of the terminal, it's going through requesting that data and compiling all these files for us, which by default with the starter, you're gonna get an RSS feed, you're gonna get a sitemap, and you're also gonna get some dynamic images. But once the page loads, we can see that we now have our WordPress site. And it's just like we saw with the Next.js WordPress starter demo site, where we have all of our blog posts, we even have the categories and the user, which because I'm still working with a default WordPress instance, there's not a lot of dynamic variables in there, but we have our basic site. It even comes by default with our search, which we can see here, and we're off to a great start. Now, as I mentioned before, this is simply a Next.js website. So what that means is we can go over into our project and inside of the pages, or really anywhere inside of the application, we can customize this exactly how we want to. Now, in our case, we're setting this H1 by using the title from WordPress itself. But say, for instance, I wanted to call this Colby, just for demonstration purposes, we can see that when it reloads with Next.js, it says Colby. So really, you can do whatever you want here. The benefit of having these attributes come directly from WordPress is you or anyone else who manages this site can manage it right inside of WordPress itself. It's also worth noting that while it does seem very buttery smooth when we're visiting the static deployed app, when you're developing locally, it might seem a little bit slow. Like if I go to the user page, because what's actually happening is every time that page loads, it's going to make those queries and fill out all that data needed to build this page where that's going to be happening using get static props. Meaning when we actually deploy this application, that's all going to be compiled and statically generated. So when it's actually deployed, it'll be a static application. No requests will be made between those different page requests, and it's going to be super lightning fast. And to test out just that, let's actually deploy this new project to Netlify. Now, before we actually get started deploying this to Netlify, the first thing we need to do is set this up inside of GitHub. So I went ahead and created a new repository. I named it my blog, just like the project. And I went ahead and pushed out all the files that we had locally up onto the my GitHub repository. Now inside of Netlify itself, we can go start off by creating a new site from Git where I already have my GitHub connected. So we can see that it's already authorized where if you're not, you should probably authorize there with your GitHub account just to make this a little bit easier and more seamless. But now I can search for my blog where it's going to come up with my GitHub repository in a second here. And once I select that, we can see that I start getting a few options where I can enter my build command as well as a publish directory. Now we can see here with this message that Netlify is actually detecting that it's already a Next.js site, meaning it's going to be able to pre-configure how this actually gets deployed. But in our instance, we're going to actually export this statically, meaning we don't need to rely on that plugin. So we're gonna manually enter our build command where we're gonna enter yarn build or npm run build if you're using npm. And for the published directory, we're gonna use out. Now out is the default directory when exporting the project. But when we run our yarn build command, let's head over to our project where inside of our package.json, what we're doing by default is we're gonna first build our next project, but we're also going to export that next project, which means it's going to build it Next.js style, but then it's going to also export those files statically, at which point Netlify will take those files and they'll deploy it to static hosting and a CDN. Now, before we actually deploy this though, we wanna add our environment variable. So we wanna click show advanced here, where we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna grab these values right from our environment variable file, where if we're gonna open that up back inside of our editor, I'm gonna copy WordPress GraphQL endpoint into the variable name. I'm gonna also copy my GraphQL endpoint, paste that into the value. And now we can click deploy site 
and we can watch Netlify go. As it's going through, we can even watch along inside of the Netlify logs where we can see it's running our next build and also our next export where just like our local terminal, we can see that those files are being statically generated and compiled. But once it's finished, we can see that we're now green, we have a successful deployment, we can open that up in a new tab, and we can see our brand new site deployed to Netlify. We can even navigate around, and as we mentioned before, it's nice and super fast, where everything's loading great for us, and we even have our fast client-side search, where we can navigate around inside of our project, and we can even update the name of our project, where if we don't want something like Jovial Yoneth, we can go to Deploy Settings, and we can select our domain management where I'm going to edit my site name. And since my blog is actually already taken, let's do Colby's blog or whatever you want in this case. I'm gonna hit save. And now I immediately have Colby's blog.netlify.app. Now really, this is intended to be a starting point for your new project. While you can absolutely use the default theme and customizations that come with it, the great thing about using Next.js is you can really customize this to exactly what you want, whether it's changing the colors and the styles of the entire page, or completely taking this concept and using WordPress to create something completely different, whether that's something like an e-commerce store or some kind of inventory management. The great thing is at this point, we have the same power of WordPress that we would always expect, as well as the power of GraphQL to query all that data, where there's a lot of possibilities with what we can do. The great thing about bringing together a headless WordPress instance along with Next.js is we can really provide a lot of powerful options, such as giving a great content management experience for our clients or for even ourselves, and even giving a great browser experience for our websites or applications by building out React projects with Next.js. What's your favorite use case of WordPress, or what's another headless CMS that you like? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.